For people who watch these reviews regularly, you'll notice they haven't gotten any better. And you also may be familiar with Flashlight Maker Silent Thunder Ordnance, which is a murica based company that builds insanely modified lights and unique small production original design flashlights. They concentrate on beam intensity and throw over lumens, usually, but that is until now, where they combine big lumens and big throw through flashlight magic and maybe some enchanted pig blood. In fact, the Storm of Ra happens to have an important distinction among production flashlights. It's actually throwier than the TN-42, which is a through-night flashlight and used to be the throwiest light ever, and it's way brighter. Now the BLF GT is coming out soon, so technically right now it's the throwiest production light you can get your hands on. That one's going to be about one and a half million candela. The Storm features a large, partially 3D printed body with an integrated handle, a very large lens in front of a compound optic system. It uses a Cree XHP 70.2 emitter that's a neutral white intent, and it's operated off a three position toggle switch which is pretty cool if you're into switches. It features a active cooling system with a fan and a heat sink, so you can run it full chooch, as Silent Thunder Ordnance puts it, without fear of it getting too hot. The light can be powered off two 18650s or alternatively, or alternatively, two 2700 cells for maximum runtime and power. The Storm uses Guppy DRV Revision 2 firmware with a 6 volt low voltage protection built in. To non-flashlight people that just means it can be programmed simply with one mode or up to seven modes with just a few button clicks. So for people who like one mode or for people who like lots of modes you can both be happy. I've linked the page below that details all the options. Anyway I chose three mode operation with moonlight 30% and 100%. So let's look at those damn figures on screen and Silent Thunder ordinances for the modes they've provided figures for. Moonlight, very usable, very low. It makes me happy. 30% now. It's still throwy with a bit longer of a runtime. Then 100%. There is no such thing as turbo on this light because turbo is a trick used by manufacturers to make a light seem brighter than it actually is. The beam pattern is unique because of the optics Silent Thunder Ordnance uses. It throws well with very little spill, all the light being in the center of the beam. It's like one big hotspot. But you can still easily see the ground in front of you because there is a little bit of spill. And this particular version has some translucent parts, so actually a tiny little bit of light comes out of the rear. So the sun does shine back there. Okay, not the sun. I would almost describe it as a light projector more than a flashlight, but that's just my opinion. The UI operation is very simple with a three position switch. Put in the batteries below, which are in series. Remember 20 amp cells are higher. Screw down the nut, flip it over, and push the brass switch forward to turn it on. The switch is three position, off, on, and then a spring loaded mode toggle. When the light is on, click forward one more to switch modes. Just press it forward and it springs back as you click through the modes. I happen to turn mode memory off and set it to start on low with only three modes. So it just scrolls through all modes from moonlight to 30%, 100%, and it loops over and over and over again. But I don't care what mode you program. I notice the fan operates at higher levels but not moonlight. Very smart silent thunder ordinance. Run times. For this I use two 2700 E-Fests. You can also use 18650s in a pinch, but use cells rated for 20 amps per cell draw or more. Unprotected and flat top cells are fine. The light has low voltage protection built in, of course, like I said earlier. Um, there are some Sanyo NCR 2700A cells that are really good, but they're hard to find right now. So. That's what Silent Thunder Ordnance recommends. I just couldn't find any at the time. Expect higher performance probably on those cells. First up is full tutor, 100%. In the first minute, we have a seven-ish percent drop. That's 6,000 to about 5,500 lumens. Turbo is direct drive, so the light dims as the batteries drain. 
Three minutes in, we're at 5,100-ish lumens. Ten minutes in, we've seen a 28% drop, or we're still putting out about 4,300 lumens. And at about 14 minutes in, it shuts off, putting out at about 1,000 lumens when it shuts off. Just under 15 minutes on 100%. But that's why you bought more cells, right? It drains batteries fast. And it stays easily holdable the whole time, cause the fan. Okay, let's do 30% mode. After about two minutes in, we have a 6% drop, or 1,924 lumens to a little over 1,800 lumens. Again, these are just estimates and I'm translating numbers I read to translate to lumens figures. Different batteries and conditions, or if you're a jerk, will yield different results. 10 minutes in, we've lost 16% brightness, or we're at 1,614 lumens. Then 30 minutes in, we're at a little over 1,300 lumens. The dimming intensifies, like the tipping, close to the hour mark, and at one hour in, we're at 830-ish lumens, and the light stops coming out at one hour and 10 minutes with about 300 lumens as the final lumen value. Actually, I want to say there was like a sub-moonlight mode coming out because it drops down, but again, low voltage. Each battery was about 2.8 to 2.9 volts. Every time I've tested, I'm using unprotected cells, so unprotected cells are safe to use. Cool, now the beam shots. Here are the lights you'll see me compare the Storm of Ra to. All of them are considered throwy-ish to very throwy. A lot of different styles of lights here. First is the Storm, which is the throwiest light here, obviously. Also a larger hotspot than the second throwiest light here, or my used-to-be throwiest light. It's a very defined concentrated hotspot. All the lumens... Up there in the center, I measured my candela in the very middle, which is still slightly brighter. Notice there are a little bit of ringiness. You're not going to get a completely 100% pure neutral right across the whole light, but that's because of the optic system. Deal with it. Then we have the Ace Beam K70, a much smaller hotspot and a very typical beam pattern of a light of over 500,000 candela. The Storm of Ra's beam pattern is atypical for such a throwy light, but I like it. It's a wild light, and it's fun to walk around with at night and point at things if that's what you do for fun. Although it burns through those batteries really quick, so buy a second or third set. Now the modified Brynite B158, which is an aspheric lens. So it's kind of the closest type of flashlight to the Storm of Ra, but the hotspot's a lot smaller. You see there in the center? So that's, you know, typical of very throwy lights. Now the Nikkor TM16 GT. A combination of throw and spill, or throw and flood, or candela and flood. And you can see it isn't as a defined hotspot like the storm. It's cool, but, you know, not overall as bright as the storm either. But it does have longer run times, though, because of less lumens and more batteries. Logic, brah. Then the least throwiest of all the lights, the Convoy L6. Good if you don't need a super throwy light, and... You know, you don't need to have an insane amount of lumens. Yeah, I have reviewed all of the lights seen in this video. So search for YouTube, Advanced Knife Bro, and look at some of those other videos. You know, the specific model number, of course. Okay, let's throw in one big lumen light after going to the storm for just another second. The storm is the brightest light in the whole section. Again, the caveat being that it's all in a large focus area. No other light comes close to having this many lumens and this high a candela. There is some tint shift across the beam, so people who endlessly scrutinize tint, well, this may not be the light for you. The Noctagon Meteor here is about 1,000 lumens more, but it scatters the light. It actually has optics, too. Technically the least throwiest out of all the lights now. All right, let's wrap it up. The Storm of Ra is a pretty impressive light. None of my other lights have such a concentrated, large, throwy hotspot. My second throwiest light after the Lance of Ra, but that's a modified light, technically, and has a much less useful beam pattern at a closer range. The Storm is an excellent long range light and a decent closer light, but you know, you're gonna enjoy it if you use it on distances 100, 200, 300, 400 and up. It's not a rough and tumble light though, as the heat sink is a little thin, but that allows for more surface area and more fins. So that means more cooling, it stays cooler. The exposed fan is not sharp, so it's not dangerous. The grass and leaves get caught in it, so, you know, if you set it down, set it down on a flat surface because that won't bother it. 
Heat sink fins don't touch the ground. It's very comfortable to hold and never really gets hot like many of the small bright lights do. The cooling system works and it's necessary to maintain high brightness. The switch up front is a nice change up to a button light and makes the light very easy and fun to operate. I keep saying fun. I don't know if that's fun to some people. I have a lot of lights now and this is definitely the coolest and surprise fun to use. I can't explain it other than it puts a smile on my face when I use it. And as I say that out loud, it sounds kind of creepy. It can be ordered in much more opulent finishes as this is the peasant's low end model. Finished wood, all kinds of bespoke options are available. If you're rich or have a bad time, you know, managing your money, contact Silent Thunder Ordnance to see what else they offer as far as options go. The 3D printed body here is still very sturdy as it seems to have a solid frame under it. It's not a light flashlight and it doesn't feel cheap. It's a durable composite material and not thin. Also, I don't think this light is waterproof rated, so use it in dry conditions. Everything about the light is different than any other flashlight you own, I guarantee it. I guarantee it! So if you like this review, please subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment. Of course, unless you're that jerk who commented on my Lance of Raw video a few days ago about how he could put three lights together to triple the candela and it be much better than that light. Ah, cool story, bro. Silent Thunder Ordnance provided this light for review. Thanks for watching.